Rotoscoping or movie painting is a traditional animation technique that involved tracing live action video frame by frame to create more realistic animations. Today, designers use this same technique to edit individual frames in video clips. Rotoscoping can help you add special effects, remove unwanted elements, and improve the overall image quality, among other things. So in this project, we're going to learn how to import a movie and make frame by frame edits. Now, there's two ways that you can work with importing video files. I'll show you the one way where you could actually create like animated GIF type frame based animation. To do that, you'll go to your file menu, choose import, and then choose video frames to layers. I have two free sample movie files for you to use. One's low res and one's medium res. So if you're working on your own from the project media folder, you might want to work with the medium res. That will give you a better quality, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll use the low res. Click open. This import video to layers option opens, and you can choose the range to import, whether that's the entire video clip or just a selected set of frames, or you could even limit it to every certain number of frames. And this would be to create a frame animation. When you click OK, Photoshop will look at all of the layers and then add separate layers to your layers panel and create separate frames on the timeline for you. You could then go in and modify each frame one at a time and then save your file as an output uh, animated GIF or something like that. But we do not want to work this way because it doesn't give us as much flexibility. Instead, just do File Open. You'll need to switch this to all formats at the very bottom so that you can see the files. And again, we're going to grab the uh, low res skiers movie and click open. This time, when it brings the movie in, it brings it in on the timeline in uh, regular timeline animation so that we could still look at all the individual frames but work with an actual video file. We can use this little mountain range here to uh, show the timeline a little bit wider while we're working. And then, before we make any changes at all, what we really need is a source file. Now in this case, let's play the movie so you can see what's going on here. We have some skiers going down the hill. Oh, that guy falls. Now that's the action. That's the area that we really want to be watching. But there's this other guy in the background that's kind of distracting our attention away from this guy in the front. So with this technique, we can go frame by frame and erase that other dude from the scene. So putting our playhead back at the start of the scene, what we're going to do is make a duplicate copy of layer one, which has our movie on it. And you can do Command or Control J to make the duplicate. We'll call this dupe so that we remember it. And we don't really want it on the timeline. So what we'll do is we'll move it outside of this video group and we can put it in the same spot as the original. And then we're going to be sourcing from our duplicate layer and then painting with that sourced information onto our original video in the video group one. To do that, we're going to use the clone stamp tool, but we need to get to a spot within our video on the duplicate layer that we can use. So somewhere in here, we just got to find a spot uh, like around here that has a nice clean area that we can sample from. So with that duplicate layer selected, you'll grab your clone stamp tool and then we need to open up the clone source panel through our window menu. What's great about the clone source panel is you can actually have up to five separate sources to sample and then paint from. So we have the first source selected and what we're going to do is put our cursor right in this spot hold down our Alt or Option key, and then click once to sample. If we didn't wiggle our mouse at all, the sample point should have a 0, 0 offset. We don't need to modify the horizontal or vertical scale, but if we needed to, we could by plugging in different values. We could also flip horizontal and flip vertical. These values are linked, but we don't need to mess with that. We just need a straight copy. Of course, if we wanted to, we could adjust the angle. The frame offset should be zero. We want to sample and paint from the exact same spot in this duplicate layer. And we also want to lock it down. So it's frame 47. I wouldn't have known that, but it's frame 47, that spot, zero, zero, no offset. And that is what we are going to use when we paint onto another layer. In order for us to paint, we actually need to go onto our original layer. And let's move our playhead indicator back to the beginning spot. Let's hide 
our duplicate layer, we've already sampled it. It's already part of Photoshop's memory, and it won't bother us while we're working on layer one. Now, this overlay option will show you a ghosted image from your sampled area. So if we put our cursor on here, you can see the ghosted image. This is to help you with alignment. Sometimes I think this is really great, and at other times I find it bothersome. So I'm going to disable it and just click and drag to paint that area from our sample duplicate layer onto this frame. To advance the frame, click this button here. It's just one click to go to the next frame. And then you'll repeat that action one frame at a time. So spend some time on your own going through each individual frame and painting away that annoying skier in the background. Now, if you wanted a second clone source, let's go back up to the duplicate layer and make that visible. We'll choose the second source, and perhaps we want to get rid of that little guy right there. It looks like a guy sitting on some kind of, I don't know, <laughs> it looks like some kind of car or something. Holding down our Alter Option key, we actually don't want him. We want some object to the side. So we're going to sample from here. And then what we would be doing is painting that sampled information on top. So now we have that second sample source area. We're going to hide our duplicate layer again, go back to layer one. And what we could do now is on this existing frame. And now here the overlay might really help us to put things into position like so. So now we could go back to those other individual layers and continue to paint. And we could even toggle between them. So let's go to a later frame. So we could say, all right, so I'm doing clone source two here, and let's switch over and do clone source one here. So you could go frame by frame and actually paint with two separate sources. When you're finished, you can check your work by scrubbing the playhead. And if you see any ghosted images, you can go back and further clean those up. Now, if you need to restore a particular frame, so let's move the playhead a little bit further, like right there. It looks like there's a little bit of a halo on that second clone source. And maybe what you would want to redo is go back in and resample with a hard edge brush rather than a soft edge brush so you don't get any of the sampling merging into the trees there. Go to Layer, Video Layers, Restore Frame. And that will put everything back into position the way it was. Also, there's another option here, Layer, Video Layers, restore all frames. So if you make a mistake, you could always revert it back to the original and begin again. When you're finished, you can export the video in one of two ways. You can choose Export File under the uh, File menu, Render Video, or if you had been working with the frames-based animation that I originally showed you, you would choose File Scripts, Export Layers to Files. When you're finished working, Save your file as a layered PSD. That way, if you ever need to come back into it, you can reopen it up in Photoshop and make any further adjustments as needed.